Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the brand new March 2023 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see my process, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. On the second of each month, I stop by and share the process of how to create the newest sheet load of cards. Also today, my team of collaborators will be sharing their first sets, both here on YouTube and over on Instagram. Now to see what everyone has made, here on YouTube, there are a couple different options. The first one that we hope will work is by clicking on the hashtag in the title, which I have up on screen now. But if you find that that hashtag isn't working, which YouTube's been acting up a little bit lately, I do have a link to a playlist in the description box that will take you to all of the team member videos. Now I do have to wait until a little bit after our videos go live to make that, so if it's not quite ready, please be a little bit patient with me. To see what our Instagram team members have created, I have a link to the Instagram search in the description box. And guess what? If you'd like to go see someone specific or you think you've missed someone, I also have a full collaboration team link list in that description box as well. And don't forget, we always love to see what you're creating. So if you're going to share on YouTube or Instagram, make sure to use the special hashtags at the top of each printable. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the March 2023 sheet load of cards, also down in that description box, I think that's where you can find everything, is a link to yesterday's debut video where I tell you how you can download it for free if you're a subscriber to the channel. Here in a second, we'll get started on that process, and I will tell you about products and tools that I use and give you some tips. But don't forget, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For my cards today, I am using Doodle Bug Designs My Happy Place 6x6 pattern paper. I did pre-choose four pieces. I chose two different sets for my cards. Now you could always choose like I did, or you could have two of the same pairs. That is up to you. Now you might notice that I have kind of two loud patterns together, and normally I avoid doing that. I would pair this piece of house paper with more of this subtle green pattern, but because the patterns are smaller and they'll be separated a little bit, I did go with colorful papers for both of my sets. I'm going to get started on the process by cutting my 6x6 pattern papers per the instructions. Now I will give some verbal dimension in today's video, but don't forget you don't need to write this down or remember it because you can download that free printable. Now if your papers have a certain orientation that they need to be, keep that in mind before you make your first cut. Now this piece of striped paper, I do want the stripes going vertical, so I'm going to rotate it so that stripes are horizontal, and I'm going to start cutting from the top, two rows that are two inches tall, and then two rows that are one inch tall. Now there are some scraps left over for this, and later you will see how I use those to decorate the insides. One thing to note when I get down to the bottom of the paper and I need those two one inch tall strips, my fingers do get away in the cutting bar of the trimmer, so I brought in a piece of scotch removable tape to temporarily hold that in place while I make the cut. It doesn't tear the paper and I can keep using that one piece over and over again for the rest of my cutting today. Once I have those rows cut, I'm going to cut each piece into its final size. The top two rows, 
one piece will be two inches wide, one piece will be one and a half inch wide, and one piece will be one inch wide. Those final two pieces that are each one inch tall, you're gonna cut that into a piece that is four and three quarters inches wide. Now you'll see for each of the rows, I did have some scraps left over, and right now those are just waiting at the side to be used later. Here is a look at the final pieces you'll get from each sheet of six by six. I just did my best to keep them all organized nicely so later I can get them put onto the cards. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut those other two remaining pattern papers just like the first one. Again, keeping in mind if there is a certain orientation to make sure I'm cutting the correct way on that first cut. Now one thing I did want to point out, since the pieces do fill the 6 inch height on this piece of pattern paper, you'll want to make sure that you don't do what I call generous cuts. So normally on my trimmer I would go to a little bit of the outside of the measurement line, but for this you'll want to go to the inside. Instead of making it maybe a little over 2 inches tall, make sure you're only doing 2 inches. If you don't at the end, your last piece might be a little short, which when we go to put it on the card later, it probably would be covered up, but just, I would say, be better safe than sorry, right? Just cut right at those measurements. While I continue cutting the pattern papers, I did want to stop by with a special announcement. I had some channel members reach one year of channel membership during the month of February. Scrolling up on screen now are their names. I would just like to give an extra special thank you for your continued support. You and the rest of my channel members really do keep me creating here on YouTube and a sheetload of cards free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below, or you can click on the join button below this video for more information. Now I'm going to show you how to cut the cardstock. The printable calls for two full pieces plus some scraps. Now you could either have a single scrap like I show on the cutting guide, or for me, I'm actually just using up strips that I found in my white cardstock scrap bin. To cut the full sheets of cardstock, I'm going to cut by cutting columns that are 5 inches wide from each of these two sheets of cardstock. Cutting it this way will leave you with a skinny strip on the right, and you could actually use that for one of your piece B's. Once you have your four 5 inch wide pieces, you're going to cut two off the top that are 3 and 3 quarters inches tall for piece A, and then you'll have some left over at the bottom that you can cut to 3 quarters inch tall for piece B. Now you could always leave this at one inch tall if you wanted a little bit more space for your sentiment. I continued cutting those five inch wide pieces just like that first one and I did do most of that off screen. Once I had the two full sheets of cardstock cut down, I then brought in the scraps so I could cut five additional piece B's. I started by cutting each of my scraps to five inches wide, and then I brought them back in and cut them to the three quarters of an inch tall. The last of the cutting will be for your card bases, and I don't always show this, but in case you're newer to card making, I thought I would. 
the printable calls for four pieces of cardstock. I'm going to be using this green color. And all you have to do is cut your paper in half and then fold it in half. Now these cards do fold on the five and a half inch side. So I cut each of my sheets of pattern paper into five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. At this point, you could fold those in half by hand, but I do like to bring in my score buddy and add a score line at four and a quarter inches. I usually go a couple times with my bone folder, and then after I fold it, I reinforce that edge. So I'm gonna continue scoring and folding these until I have eight total card bases. My next step is to get the three small pieces of pattern paper matted onto the white card stock. Now normally I wouldn't start the matting now, but because they are kind of little and there are a lot of them, I think it's just better to go ahead and mat those. I separated each of the three sets of my patterns and on each card you'll have a two inch wide, a one and a half inch wide, and a one inch wide piece. Now for me, I like to turn my card around. I find it's easier if I put the top of the piece toward me and I'm going to start by putting the two inch square to the outside with about an eighth of an inch border on those outside edges. Then instead of going to the next one, the one and a half inch piece, I add adhesive to the back of the one inch strip and that goes on the opposite end with that same amount of border on the outside. Now you can take the third piece, the middle, which is one and a half inches wide and center that between the two with the same one eighth of an inch border at the top. I find this is easier to get more centered and even placement for these pieces. I continued adding these until each of my white cardstock pieces had the pattern papers on them. Now, if you are gonna turn your cardstock like I have mine, make sure that if your pattern has a direction, you keep that in mind when adhering the pieces down. For instance, on this pattern, you don't want your houses upside down, so I did have to make sure when I put them down that they were facing the correct way. Once all of those little pieces were glued down, I brought in pattern paper piece D, which is the thin strip at the bottom, and I matched each one up to its coordinating pattern papers on the top. These pieces get adhesive on the back and glued to the bottom of the white cardstock piece. I try to keep the outside borders the same, and you'll notice there is space between the top and bottom pieces, but don't worry, we'll be covering that up a little bit later. I added the remaining strips of pattern paper, and then I brought in my card bases. The pattern paper piece just got centered right on the front. Now you could definitely use a white card base and make your matte card stock a different color, just something where they will stand out and have some contrast from each other. Once I had all of those done, I took a break on adhering and it was time to figure out the sentiments. For this, I'm going to kind of go with what the sketch shows, which is a die cut and stamp sentiment, but you could always do it differently. You could do all stamped, you could do all die cut, or you could even skip it and do something like a stamped image. For me, I use the Stamp Anything Hello die, and I cut those out of the green cardstock. For the rest of the sentiment, I brought in my Misty with my stick and stamp mat. Since the pieces of white cardstock aren't quite big enough to have the magnet and the stamp on it, this helps me make sure my pieces stay right in the lower right hand corner. I did go ahead and bring in the die cut to get my stamp in the correct place. And once I had the stamp set up, I was able to quickly stamp eight total of those. I used Jelly Bean Green ink from Gina K Designs. Once those were all stamped, it was time to finish assembling the cards. 
This sediment strip gets adhered onto the pattern paper piece and will fill the cardstock left to right and it covers the gap between the top and bottom patterns. Now if you use a colored cardstock it might be a little bit more obvious that this is a piece covering the gap but because the background cardstock was white it looks pretty similar as to what it did before. Also, if you wanted to on this piece, you could put it on the card front with some foam tape and add some dimension, but I did want to keep these as flat as possible. Once again, I finished all of these, getting them added to the cards off screen. To get the hellos added to the card fronts, I'm going to be using some art glitter glue. And instead of using the fine tip on my bottle to get the glue on the back of the die cut, I have a little silicone mat here and I'm going to use a sponge to dab into the glue and then dab onto the back of the hellos. I think my mom taught me this, she had seen a Stampin' Up! demonstrator use it and it was just a nice way to get a layer of glue on the back. Let me know in the comment section below if you have seen or tried this trick. Once each of the hellos were on there, I let these dry for about 5 minutes before moving on. Like I mentioned before, I would be trying to use the scraps up somehow to decorate the inside of the cards. I decided since these were pretty small pieces that I would use some of my circle dies and I cut two out for the inside of each of the cards and here's what those look like. Also while I was off screen, I did cut some white cardstock just to make the inside message easier to read. To finish the cards off, you know I wanted to add a little sparkle, so I brought in some pink gems from my stash, which I thought matched the pattern papers well, and added a trio to each of the sentiment strips. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put my first set of cards together using the March 2023 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go see what all of the collaborators have created using the hashtag in the title and the links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.